Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. I wanted to cover a few um, re issues regarding economics and finance. And so let's just launch right into it. So on January 1st, um, you know, the Senate voted to approve the National Defense Authorization Act, the defense spending bill, and they refused to offer any kind uh, of a floor vote for the $2,000 stimulus. And 41 Democrats, you know, yeah, we're part of this to, to force the NDAA with no debate or vote on the $2,000 stimulus. Even though uh, some Republicans were crossing over the, to approve that $2,000 stimulus. Uh, you know, no vote was ever taken. And so, yeah, uh, I know people are going to say, oh, well, Sanders was fighting for us. I'm, no, I, I just don't believe that. And, um, you know, I've already talked about that, so I'm not going to go into it again. Then today... Uh, Nancy Pelosi was voted in as House Speaker again. There was no force to vote. Did not happen at all. You know, nobody held her feet to the fire to uh, try and force her to bring Medicare for all to a floor vote in the House. You know, nobody, nobody's, nobody's fighting for us. So up there, yeah, all they care about is their own grip on power and their own cult. And yet both cults are just one cult and, you know, it's a big club and you ain't in it. Stock market with no, with, with, yeah, $600 checks and the stock market goes up to Record highs, over 30,600. Meanwhile, we have still got more people being laid off. Over 20 million Americans that, at least 20 million Americans, and those numbers are false. I've talked about this many times, that the unemployment numbers being quoted are fake. They, they're made up. They're lies. And yet, we've got at least 20 million Americans unemployed and tens of millions more underemployed. And, more, and we've got more layoffs coming. So here's this. This is from The Advocate. Shell details layers layoffs of 700 people. Sorry, this is being a little stubborn. 700 people in convent uh, refinery site that are being laid off. 700. And this article also talks about United Steelworkers also being laid off. They don't go into numbers on that. Uh, you know, the union contract won't expire until 2022, so maybe it's just difficult to you know, state actual numbers. But U.S. Steel provides the pipes and the equipment needed to keep the refinery going. Well, if there's no refinery to provide the equipment to, then you know, U.S. Steel is not going to um, <laughs> need those workers. Two other oil refineries in Louisiana are laying off workers as the profit margin for producing gasoline and jet fuel has tanked in recent months. Crot Springs and Calcasieu Refining Company. So there is that. And get back here. All right, and hide that. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. 
it's dragging on the CPU. All right, so something I'm always trying to get people to do is to look upstream and downstream from uh, announcements and events like this. You know, upstream, what led to this? Downstream, uh, what are the after effects of this? So upstream, you've got a decline in, uh, you know, the demand for oil and gas. All right. So that means that, you know, sales are low at gas stations across the country, etc. <coughs> that means people are not traveling as much. That means that hotels are suffering. That means that Airlines are suffering, bus companies, mass transit uh, are all suffering. All right, so now you've got 700. So some people look at this and think 700 jobs is not that many. Okay, these are living wage jobs. These people own homes they, or rent apartments. They have cars, car payments. Um, they pay taxes which support schools, they buy at local, at businesses to support other, other businesses in their town. You know, the, the article does go into some of these people may be able to go to another town to work for a chemical company. Maybe, but still, that's in another town. You know, are these people going to relocate to other towns? Then you got truckers. Most of the truckers that drive the tankers are not direct employees of the refinery. They own their own trucks. They contract um, independently. So now they've lost revenue. They've lost income. Some of them probably live locally. Well, are they going to pick up and relocate to another locate to another place that has more business for them? That's highly likely. Either that, or they have to spend more days, more weeks away from their homes and their families. But you know, the revenue for businesses, tax revenue. Well, that tax revenue supports what teachers libraries, road repairs, and those in turn are jobs that produce tax revenue which help to support those jobs in a cycle. So if they get laid off, they're not paying taxes, and it all runs into a downward cycle. You always have to look up and down you can't just look at just 700. It doesn't work that way. There's a lot more to it. Okay. Let's go back to that stock market thing. Now, I saw a, uh, a very good report on Epic Economist uh, the other day. But that was a report on a report. So I guess I'm doing a report on a report on a report. But <laughs> it's like... I brought up these uh, arguments before, but never bound together. Uh, this was talking about MMT. And uh, again, it talks about how MMT is just a libertarian capitalist wet dream. Uh, they had not their words, those are my words. So the, while we've got millions, tens of millions of Americans unemployed, tens of millions more underemployed, you know, and more layoffs coming, the stock market hits record highs. Um, you know, proponents of MMT say, well, we can just keep printing money, uh, you know, to print our way out of debt. <clears throat> no, we can't do that. You're monetizing debt. And the problem with all of this is that you look at the stock market in relationship to the real economy. What is happening here? Companies are laying people off to 
keep profits so that investors get paid. Okay? So they keep on pumping more money into the stock market. Yeah, you keep printing it. Um, and that's where it goes. Do you realize that right now, global debt is over 360% of glo global GDP? Now, how do you wind up not devaluing currency? Well, the dollar is being devalued. It has dropped about 10% this year, in the past year. But it's going to keep on dropping. Uh, you can deny this, but it's still going to happen. And eventually what's going to happen with that is hyperinflation. When the dollar drops in value, you wind up having to spend more dollars for the same goods. And we're going to wind up with double or triple digit inflation. And it's coming very soon. You know, libertarians and MMTers say, oh, but, uh, you know, that's not real capitalism. That's corporatism. Corporatism is capitalism. Look, all the way, keep looking back through history. The Indian... Uh, you know, the East Indian Tea Company, um, Standard Oil, etc. This is capitalism. Capitalism is an eating machine. The whole point of capitalism is always to be making a profit, no matter what the cost is. You know, that defense spending bill. You know, that's about profit for military contractors. You know, laying people off from oil companies. That's about profit for the oil companies. They're not turning enough of a profit. You know, another report came out um, that I just heard today. Walmart and Amazon could have quadrupled their compensation to their employees over the past year, and they still would have made more of a profit than they did in 2019. But look at their profit margin. Where does it go? Not to you. Not to the workers. Not to you. It goes to the very top. That is capitalism. That is capitalism. That is the whole point of capitalism. Libertarians and MMTers talk about, um, you know, oh, but capitalism is small businesses, but then they want to remove regulations on capitalism. Well, if you remove the regulations, then what is stopping you know, companies from getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Most of you have stock. Most of the libertarians and MMT proponents own stock. But you're going to rage against corporatism. You, do you ever look at yourself? Do you ever listen to yourself? Do you? Because you make no sense. All right, let's move on from that. Real estate. I have been saying, a lot of people are saying, a lot of economists are saying, that a, another stock market crash bigger than 2008 is coming. You don't believe it because you see the exact same things that you saw that led up to 2008. There are, there's a shortage of homes and real estate on the market. Um, you know, but more than half of people, you know, up to what, 29 years old, I think, 
are now living with their parents, more than half, more than ever, more than during the Great Depression. You think about that. Think about the difference in times. More than half of young Americans are living with their parents now. There are more people that are, you know, sharing apartments or houses, and etc. So why is there a shortage? Yeah, some people are moving out of apartments and condos and buying homes out in, you know, rural or suburban areas. But that is not enough to account for this. Because this was going, this was going on and climbing up to this point before the pandemic came along. You got less, less property available. Well, and there are actually, there are actually fewer people renting now in apartments. Why is there a shortage? Well, that's because equity buyers are buying up the property because they realize the stock market is just too unpredictable. They realize the dollar is declining in value, so they're buying up real assets. You know, and that was another point I meant to make, you know, it, just to word it that way. If people are investing in stocks and all this stuff, they're not investing in real assets. They're not building companies. They're not buying assets, real assets. They're buying this, you know, fantasy stock. But then there are people that are, that are buying up mostly corporate entities buying up properties right now, taking them off the market. Well, sooner or later, this is the same thing that happened in 2008. The stock market eventually is going to crash. You know what's propping up real estate right now? The Federal Reserve is buying up mortgage-backed securities. In November alone, the Federal Reserve bought $100 billion in mortgage-backed securities. If you take all this from the Federal Reserve away, now that is not real capitalism. But if you take all the actions of the, the Federal Reserve away, then you would be seeing a massive crash. And this cannot continue. There is no way. How long can they continue this before the dollar becomes absolutely worthless? Only worth pennies. It's only a matter of time. The majority of dollars that are in circulation were actually created in the past year. We, the Federal Reserve created more money in 2020 than ever existed combined in all of history. Where does this go? Well, I really don't have to keep on saying where this goes. Anyway, stop with the MMT. I don't want to hear it. You know, libertarians, if you can't hold a lucid discussion on this and talk about how these things work, where the rubber meets the road, then you don't have a point to make. All right? That is it for this one. Please share this video, talk about these subjects. If you can 
uh, for it. And please donate a dollar a month to help expand the channel. And I will catch you in the next one.